Hello InfoPerso, this is Anton, and today I wanted to start with this. What you're seeing right here are the observations from the Fermi telescope. These are gamma rays, coming from an extremely distant place, approximately 2.1 billion light years away from us, with these observations showing us what happened during a period of about 10 hours. This is the most powerful gamma ray burst we've ever detected. Okay, cool, cool. Then there was this. These are the observations of the ionosphere from Europe, showing us something unusual happened at this particular time. Something quite powerful. Something that actually even affected the radio communication on the planet during this period of time because of these somewhat dramatic effects. You can read about this detection and the announcement from the bulletin message that was sent out on October 13th by a Canadian researcher. And, as you can probably guess, this was indeed caused by that particular gamma ray burst. This insanely powerful explosion 2.1 billion light years away from us that was most likely caused by some kind of a massive star collapsing and basically turning into a black hole was powerful enough to then affect the ionosphere on the planet and even affect the radio communication that was detected by several different observatories and reported by several researchers. And so naturally every single telescope that was able to observe this tuned in to see what they can actually discover. These were the observations from the Swift X-ray telescope approximately an hour after the initial glow. And the bright rings that you see right here are essentially the result of various scattered X-rays produced by various very difficult to observe dust layers, although in this case from our own galaxy interacting with the gamma rays as they move toward the Milky Way, through the Milky Way and toward planet Earth. In the end creating these beautiful concentric rings that you see right here. It also produced the optical afterglow observed by various amateur astronomers and essentially resembled a tiny tiny star that lasted for just under one day. And that's because generally after gamma ray bursts occur, they go through various types of emissions, multi-frequency emissions, because of the interactions of fast moving particles coming from the center of the collapsing black hole with massive layers of various gas that accumulated around the star over the period of possibly hundreds, thousands or even millions of years. This simulation from NASA sort of helps us imagine what really happened here. As the star starts to collapse, and in this case it was probably a star approximately 30 solar masses or even more, it releases these two powerful jets moving in opposite directions and they actually pierce through the star, producing the initial effects we observe. And this is of course where we see the gamma rays. Today we believe that most of these emissions usually come from collapsing stars, with a few of them very likely also coming from merging neutron stars that in the past have also been detected to produce these gamma ray observations. And so when these two jets are positioned in just the right way, we see this extremely bright emission visible from pretty much anywhere in the universe, or almost anywhere. It really depends on the strength of the gamma ray. But most of the ones we've seen so far were pretty powerful. But these events are relatively rare, and it's even more rare to be in just the right location to basically see the jets or to have these jets pointed at you which means that we actually have never seen these events from our own galaxy, and the closest one we've seen so far was approximately 130 million light years away from us, detected back in 2014. But the majority are usually billions of light years away, and in this case this was approximately 2.1 billion light years away. But for a galaxy like the Milky Way, we believe these events are still pretty rare, possibly happening anywhere from once per 10,000 years to maybe once per 1 million years. And that's not necessarily pointed toward planet Earth either. As a matter of fact, if it was pointed away from us, we would unlikely to actually have seen it. But intriguingly enough, this particular gamma ray burst, originally detected on October 9th, is still visible even today when I'm making this video, and it's probably still going to be visible for at least a couple of weeks. And that's basically how powerful it was, meaning that it's still going to be producing quite a lot of other observations, including of course radio emissions, as all of this interacts with the gas around the star and produces all sorts of afterglow. Although the actual burst, the one that caused the ionosphere of the planet to change, only lasted for a few seconds, or actually more like a couple of minutes. This time graph right here shows us that the most dramatic effects were only approximately 5 to maybe 10 minutes long, with the ionosphere pretty quickly recovering afterwards. But the fact that it even had an effect on the planet, even though it happened 2.1 billion light years away from us, is already pretty mind-blowing, as you can see, with this image sort of illustrating the point. The photons coming from here were approximately 18 tera electron volts of energy, or 18 followed by 12 zeros. The most powerful ever detected, with these powerful events most likely only happening once every century or so. And since this is most likely also going to be producing infrared emissions at some point, 
it's very likely going to be observed by the James Webb telescope as well, with the radio observatories following afterwards. And because this is such a powerful explosion and such a powerful emission, it's also believed to be responsible for the production of a lot of heavy elements, including things like gold, platinum, uranium, and so on. And so the scientists are hoping to find some of the signatures of these elements coming from these emissions later on. Although in this case, what makes this particular detection even more exciting is really the fact that it only took less than a day for a lot of different observatories to join in and to start observing it, collecting huge amounts of data already. Within just a few days, pretty much every major telescope was pointed at this, trying to see what else they can find, with many researchers now referring to this as BOAT, brightest of all time. It really seems to be the brightest and the most powerful GRB we've ever seen, and actually probably for one main reason. Even though it was quite powerful and it produced quite a lot of energy, it was also relatively close compared to some of the other ones that could have been even more powerful, but were probably a little bit more distant, so in this case we basically just kind of got lucky. And because the data from this particular GRB is going to be absolutely mind-blowing, it's very likely we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. But I guess the more important question here is, of course, okay, let's just say that this happened closer to us, maybe even in the Milky Way. Is this game over for us? Is the Earth basically kind of finished? Well, this is where things, at least for me, get a little bit more interesting. Because based on previous research and based on a lot of archaeological evidence, the scientists have determined that it might have happened before. There might have been several closer GRBs hitting planet Earth, possibly even as frequently as once every 5 million years, and at least one of them possibly was even much, much closer, affecting the planet quite dramatically. At least one mass extinction event that happened approximately 450 million years ago, the Elite Ordovician Mass Extinction, also known as OS, have been suggested to have occurred because of the GRB within approximately 6,000 light years away from planet Earth. It could have been due to a collision between neutron stars or maybe a collapse of a massive star into a black hole. Although obviously other causes have been proposed as well. But that's 450 million years ago, suggesting that these are kind of rare. But what effects would those actually be? Well, modern research suggests that the actual immediate effects are not going to be as dramatic as we think. It's not really like a laser shooting the planet, burning everything on the surface. Quite the opposite. Our planet, or specifically the atmosphere of the planet, is going to absorb most of the X-rays and the gamma rays almost completely. And so none of this is going to affect life at all. Nobody will even notice it. However, this will start affecting the atmospheric chemistry in the upper atmosphere, which will then start affecting life on the surface. It's believed that the biggest effect is most likely going to be on the ozone layer, very likely depleting the ozone layer by approximately 30%. And that effect will last for many years, reducing the overall protection from the UV light coming from the sun, and thus creating quite a lot of potential hazard for life on the planet. It will also very likely result in dramatic increases in different types of chemical smog, mostly from the chemistry from the nitrogen oxides, which might decrease the amount of light reaching the surface, the amount of photosynthesis on the planet, and thus affect the atmosphere even more, with other effects potentially including acid rain, which could increase around the planet and thus change the chemistry as well. And so all of these effects are generally kind of secondary, not really primary, from the emissions themselves. But definitely not as dramatic as you might think from just seeing what these particular emissions are. In this case, the jet itself is not really going to be burning anything on the surface, only affecting the chemistry of the atmosphere. Unless obviously it happens really close to us, but that's extremely unlikely, because we would have to be in the vicinity of an extremely massive star, with the star then going supernova and thus producing these effects. Nothing like this exists in our vicinity. But because of the potential dangers from these gamma ray bursts, today the scientists believe that, well, technically speaking, Planet Earth is actually in one of the safest locations in the galaxy. We are in a low-density region on the outskirts of the galaxy, and there are no really massive stars next to us, or no active regions where these stars exist. At the same time, our galaxy is not very active, so it doesn't really have the potential to produce these objects, with the majority of the galaxies out there, over 90% of them, being much more active than the Milky Way, and thus having more chances for gamma ray bursts hitting those planets. As a matter of fact, because most of the gamma ray bursts we've detected so far seem to have happened over 1 billion years ago, it does suggest that maybe these events were much more common back then and in certain types of galaxies, once again suggesting that the Milky Way just made planet Earth a little bit luckier. Overall though, this particular event is definitely not something we should be worried about, 
because it's not going to happen in our lifetimes, or possibly not even in the lifetimes of our entire species. Nevertheless, an extremely interesting detection, a very interesting event, and will definitely teach us a little bit more about the universe as we start analyzing what actually happened here, what sort of materials this ended up producing, and what effects it's going to have afterwards because it is the brightest of them all, the most powerful and the easiest to see so far. But once we discover something else about this, or find out what happened here, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.